good morning. Hope everybody's doing good today. And um, it is nine o'clock on uh, in the morning on Tuesday, March the second of 2021. And hope you're doing good today. And I'm glad you guys are joining us uh, this morning. And um, want to welcome you to hey. Brad, good morning to you, my brother. And it looks like there's Pastor Donna. Good morning, Pastor Donna, to you. Uh, but uh, th there's, um, it's a good day today. Today, I've already decided that today is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. And uh, man, I better clean my glasses a little bit. I, I, I want to make sure I have clear vision today, you know, um, to see where the Lord is going to take me. And uh, however, I'm going to follow after him, regardless of how good or bad my sight is today. I'm just going to follow him. And uh, I'm glad you guys are joining us today. It's uh, going to be a beautiful day here in Albuquerque. And uh, Pastor Don and I were talking about last night that, hey, good morning, Atlanta. Uh, Pastor Don and I were talking about last night that it's amazing how... Uh, we are already into the month of March of 2021, and um, how fast time seems like it goes by, you know. And uh, in some ways, it's not so fast. I mean, like right whenever you we were going through 2020 with uh, COVID, it seemed like it was going to last forever. Now we're into 2021, but it just seems like the last two months have zoomed by. And I was thinking about that yesterday, and I was after we had said something, and I was talking. Uh, to myself in the pickup truck driving down the road going, you know what, man? Um, it's time to take advantage of the time we're in right now and uh, make hay when the sun's shining. That's just an old farmer's term um, of, uh, you know, that whenever you've got, uh, whenever the season is right and, and once you cut your hay, you've got to make it. In other words, you got to get it picked up off the ground and it's harvest time. And uh, so I kind of, I feel that way. I sense that way. Um, personally also since that for the church uh it seems to me like we have an our transition good morning mama louise seems like we're transitioning right now uh in the church i'm not talking about just atomic church but in, uh, atomic church is included in this but uh, the church here in america seems like there's a transition i'm hearing quite a bit more about uh, the holy spirit good morning liz the holy spirit uh, moving in church services uh, across the nation, different situations and different times. And I, I can tell you this, that's a, when we begin to see that it's a, it, it's a sign of revival getting ready to move on our land. Uh, it's a sign that God is, um, trying to get his people's attention and trying to get uh, all people's attention. And Hey, good morning, Rhett. Uh, and so, uh, I just sense that it's a, it's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be uh, part of the family of God and, and to be involved in what God is doing here in the earth. And there's lots of changes going on. Uh, and whenever you have change, um, you know, I just believe that it's a an opportune time for us to bring people into the kingdom of God, to bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and to, um, you know, just be proactive in promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ because, uh, you know, that's what the world needs is they, they need the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, so they can have some hope. And um, when we live in times that are kind of seem, it, a lot of people may feel like it may be kind of hopeless on what's going on right now, but it is not hopeless because we have the Lord and we have a promise from him. So I just want to encourage you this morning, uh, don't don't draw back. Now's not the time for us, the church, to draw back, but to press forward uh, with the things of the kingdom of God and with his plans, with his purposes. And, uh, you know, personally, I'm so massively committed to that. I just sense personally I just, you know, I sense the Lord telling me just to move forward and keep pushing forward. And so I hope that encourages you this morning. I know that I'm encouraged with it. And that's what, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep moving forward with God, trusting God, believing God for who he is and what he says he's going to do for his promises. And we're going to see it come to pass uh, in, in our, you know, in our church, but in our families, in our homes, with our friends and our neighbors and uh, here in our city and then here in our state. And, um, you know, how many of you guys know that our state is in, we've got some issues going on right now, right? We've, we've got some issues uh, in our state that are very difficult. And um, so 
We just need to keep praying and believing and, and um, moving forward with God and doing whatever it is God is telling us to do. Uh, whatever that is for you individually and then us corporately as a church. So anyway, just want to bring that up. And I've got a word for you this morning here. just want to talk about something that uh, the Lord has been was impressing on me to, to speak about today to you. And um, this is Faith Talks with Pastor Mark. And I, I'm going to pray here in just a minute. And the, what, what we kind of set up these Faith Talks what we set these faith talks up for was to uh, talking about faith. Um, what is it? How do we get it? How do we use it? And how do we keep it? And this is kind of a you know uh, a real key factor in our walk with God, and uh, you know what it is that God would have us to do. We're not going to be able to do it without faith. We can't just do it in the natural fleshly man or fleshly woman, we can't just accomplish God's purpose by ourselves or alone, uh, doing what we think we need to do or, or doing things our way. We've got to use faith and connect with the word of God and connect with God and his promises and then act accordingly. And the acting accordingly with whatever the word of God says in our lives means that we're going to use faith. That's what faith does. It acts according to what it it believes or what the Bible says in our lives. So we act out what it is that the word is telling us and what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. So we can't accomplish God's purpose in the earth without faith. So it requires us to use our faith. It requires us to get hold of it. It requires us to strengthen it. And there's ways that we can do this. It's not just very simply, hi, Josh Sachs. Good morning to you, buddy. And it's not just something that we, um, that we hope happens. It's something that we actually are able to uh, connect with God and something that we can strengthen by how, uh, by how we act and what we think and what we do. And it's the doing parts where it turns into faith. So um, I want to pray real quick here and I'll jump right into what I have for you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for your love and your mercy and your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Father, that there's nothing too hard for you. We also thank you, God, Lord, that in our lives, Father, uh, that we uh, can expect you to do great things in our lives because that's who you are. And it's not just be, and you're a good, good father, and we can expect you to do great things. It's who you are, but it's also, God, it's your promise to us, Lord, that there's no evil that's going to befall us, that there's, there's no plague or no weapon that's formed against us that's going to prosper. That's for us in our house, God, because we've determined that we're going to love you and serve you and give our hearts to you that we're going to serve you all the days of our life, and you're going to make a way even in the in the darkness. And when there seems to be no way, you're going to make a way no matter what it is that we face in life. So, Father, we thank you for that. And that's one of the reasons today that we have great joy. And it's one of the reasons today, God, that we have great hope and we have great peace is because we believe you're always going to do what you said you're going to do in your word. So we trust you with it, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, hey, hey, Daniel. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good to see you on here, man. How's it going in Tucumcari, New Mexico? So a couple of things. I, I just want to, I, I read something uh, that uh, Richard Mansfield posted. Um, he is uh, a pastor of a great church here in Albuquerque. He's known by many, many, many people, uh, city leaders. Uh, he is really, really a, a mighty man of God here in our city with a great church and um, he posted something today, uh, and I'm using the word great church because they have such a beautiful outreach, and they touch people, and, and they, they love people, and they help people uh, outside of the four walls of the church, and just, he's a real inspiration for all of us pastors around, and uh, he's, he's a leader of, uh, um, among pastors, and uh, just a, a great man of God, and he posted something today. I don't know if it's something that he, he said or if he got it somewhere else or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, it just the words kind of really rang true to me today. And uh, in, in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36, um, it says, uh, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? For what will it profit a man or a woman if he or she gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And then he posted something below that that just really rang true to me and I thought man I just got to talk about that today and the Holy Spirit's just leading me and dealing with me personally on this but um, he also this is what he posted below that scripture there are people so poor 
that the only thing they have is money. There are people so poor that the only thing they have is money. Repeat it one more time for you. And, and because, I mean, it's just, it's a profound statement. There are people so poor that the only thing that they have is money. And for the next few minutes here, I want to talk to you guys about that. Um, <clears throat> I spent uh, the early part of my adult years uh, seeking to have money and trying to uh, position myself with business uh, to have money and to um, manipulate situations and circumstances and manipulate people so that I could have some money and to get what I wanted to get. And I was, uh, I was motivated by money. And what was interesting was it wasn't so much that um, I was motivated by quote unquote money as it was by the uh, the thought that the money would give me power and the money would give me a position. And you, you may not be here, uh, but you may. Yeah, I don't know where you're at in your situation right now. But that's where I was at for a lot of young adult years of my life. That the, and even into my Christian walk, um, I praise God that I've been delivered from this thought process um, that if, if I had some money, I'd be somebody. Or if I had some money, I'd have some power. Or if I had some money, I'd have some position. And um, a lot of people are in, they think that if they can get some money because of what it represents, that it's going to fix their problem. And that's kind of what I thought most of my life. I thought about, you know, if I can just get enough money, I'll be satisfied and I'll, and I'll find a place of contentment with that because it's going to give me a position in life and I'll be somebody because I have money. And this is truth coming out here, personal truth. And I, I hope this hope, it helps somebody. I hope it helps you this morning. And, and I found out uh, through the last 27 years of following Christ and, and, and really getting into the Word of God and digging into the Word of God and, and uh, getting it on the inside of me, I found out that there are people so poor that the only thing they have is money. And I looked up at times, I'd have a little bit of money in my pocket, I'd have whatever going on somewhat, and um, it, did never, it, never, it never satisfied me. It was never a satisfaction level with it. Um, just the minute that I'd get the big paycheck or the big commission check, um, all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'd look up and uh, I, like within, it was like an, it was a temporary rush I'd get when I got that big paycheck. And just almost as soon as I got it, I'd go, ah, oh, and I'd want to go buy me a new TV or whatever it was. And just as soon as that was, as that happened, it was like it was over and I was completely empty again. And, um, I'll be honest with you, it didn't matter how much money I had in my pocket, I was still poor because I was striving and reaching forward towards something that was elusive and something that would never bring me any contentment whatsoever. And, and I, you know, I'm not saying anybody that's watching is in that position or not. I'm just giving you my personal testimony here. And um, because, and, and I'll say it like this, we're, today we're talking about striving and pushing for money Again, the scripture we're using is Mark 8, 36, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet loses his soul? Uh, and and uh, that's what I was doing. I was trying to gain the whole world, and yet I still couldn't find any contentment. And uh, through the practice of being a Christ follower uh, for the last 27 years, uh, I've had, praise God, I have had a... Um, you know, multiple encounters with the Holy Spirit, with God dealing with me in this situation, this area of my life. And I believe I've been delivered from that thought process of gaining the whole world that was going to give me some kind of peace or contentment or something like that. And I just want to, uh, I just, I want to tell you today that true contentment and peace uh, will never, ever be found in, in getting something or getting money or getting the position, 
or getting the power or getting the status or the title that deals with money or anything to do with money, uh, it will never fulfill what it is that we're looking for and what it is that we're missing in our life. The only thing that will fulfill us is the relationship with Jesus Christ. And he alone uh, is the one that fills us up. He is alone is where we've got to find our contentment. And if we're going to strive for anything, here's what we must strive for. We must strive for a deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father through Christ. That's our answer. That's the only thing that's ever going to bring contentment in our life. And uh, there are people so poor that the only thing they have is money. True wealth will come through and from and only from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so uh, I, I have a couple other scriptures I just want to share with you. And, and like I said, I'm not sure who this is for this morning. I know uh, that it's for somebody. God doesn't, he, he doesn't lead us to do like what I'm doing right now um, for the purpose of, of uh, me just saying it. And so I believe that this is for somebody. And um I can say this to you. There's there's so many times that we as people, I want I want to switch this off just for a second. Just move in a little bit different direction here. I, there's so many times that what we do, you, your issue may not be that you're going for power and for money or prestige or a title or a position. That may not be who you are, and you're, you it may not be you. That's what you're focused on seeking right now, but. You know, how about one more? Just let me, or, or a great education or so that you can be somebody. Um, you may be, that may not be your focus. You may have a different focus. Your focus might be uh, trying to find fulfillment through another person. Uh, or it might be trying to find fulfillment through a relationship. And, and this could be, I'm just telling you, it could be with a with a family member, with a with, with a somebody outside your family, whether it be uh, a significant other person in your life, you know, or or whatever. You may be trying to find your contentment in them, and your and 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 find the thing that's going to fill you up, and it's what you're seeking. You're seeking. You, you may be trying to find some type of approval from another person. It could be with your work, even uh, because you need approval. You need to be validated for who you are. And I want to tell you you're, it, that it's, it's just like what we're talking about with the money, with, with seeking position and power and money because, so, that, so that you can have something or be somebody. Um, all of this stuff is so empty, and, and it will always be empty. It always has been empty, and it always will be. The thing that's going to satisfy you and going to end up being the thing that's going to cause you to have true joy and true peace and fulfillment in your life and feel like you're full of destiny and feel like God's hand is on you, the true thing that's going to do that for you is simply going to be through seeking God and seeking a relationship with him. And um, it's a daily process. It's a daily discipline. It's a daily uh, denial of your flesh. It's a daily denial of saying, hey, not what I want, God, but whatever it is you want is what I want because I'm going to come after you with my whole heart, God. Here I am. And it's a daily getting up and renewing that thought process and that commitment to him that causes us to be changed. There's another scripture here. And I, I was just, after I read this, there are people so poor that the only thing they have is money. Um, just another scripture here that you'll find it in Proverbs 31. That's the name of our women's ministry. We see that this scripture, it appears that the scripture was written uh, to women. And a lot of times people think that, and it was written to women. It, it's, it, it talks about this virtuous woman and this virtuous wife and all these things, but it's also written to the bride of Christ. When you read this, Proverbs 31, uh, that he's writing to us, the church, and um, here's something that he says in here. Um, he said that uh, verse 30 in chapter 31, the word says that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And um, when I think about that, that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. You may be seeking approval through being so sweet and charming and 
you know, so socially acceptable and, and, and you're, you're seeking a position within your circle of being, you know, popular. I did that too. Um, and that'd be charming. Or you may be seeking, you know, a continual trying to make yourself look a certain way. Beauty. I, okay, gentlemen. Handsome. Uh, looking a certain way. Uh, and, and that's what you're seeking and that's what you're after. And I'll say this to you. There are people so poor that the only thing they have is money. And I'll say that I'll say there are people that are so poor that the only thing they have is their charming personality. There's people that are so poor that the only thing that they have is their their box of makeup. And there's so much more to us than what you see on the outside or what this world has to offer. One more time on this scripture. We're getting ready to go towards the end of what we're talking about today. Mark 836, for what will it profit a man or a woman if they gain the whole world? If they gain the, the, the gift of being charming, if they gain the bit, gift of outward beauty, if they gain the position of the CEO, if they gain the, the master's or the PhD, if they gain um, a position, quote unquote, at the church, if they gain, um, you know, money, if they gain a big checking account and a big, a big savings account, if they gain a new car or a new house, what good is it going to do that man if he gains all that stuff, yet he loses his soul? In Matthew 6.33, this is the last scripture I'm going to use today, and it's one of my favorites, and all these things that we're talking about that have a tendency to motivate us, and by the way, I want to say this to you, the motivation... I'll say it like this. I'll, I'll make it cut and dry. The motivation for all these things I just mentioned, that motivation is a fleshly motivation. It Look, the Spirit of God does not cause a person to seek first an education. The Spirit of God does not cause a person to seek first a temporal outward beauty. The Spirit of God does not seek first for a person to seek um, financial wealth or a position, or a power, or a, a title. The, the Spirit of God does not cause a person to seek these things. Matthew 6.33 says it like this. And he tells us, specifically. And, he's, and, and I want to say this, right before Matthew 6.33, he's talking about where you live, what you eat, how you look, what you have, your position in life. Your, your education, uh, your outward adornment. Your, he's talking about all these things before, right before, in Matthew 6, right before verse 33. And, and he says, he says and here's what he says to all that. He knows that all these things that you need and what you're desiring, here's what he says. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things we just talked about will be added to you. So we need God to be adding these to us, not us. We need to be led by his spirit and let him provide for us whatever, if, whatever wealth that he has for us. We don't need to seek the wealth. Whatever beauty he has for us, the outward adornment on the outside, the position, the power, the title, let him be the one that promotes us. Let him be the one that provides for us. Instead of seeking those things, the Bible tells us very plainly and very clearly right here in Matthew 6, that we're to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then he'll add all that stuff to us as, as we need it and as he sees fit and at the right time so that it'll be done the right way. And the fulfillment that we're looking for, I'm telling you, there's a lot of us that do this, and I'm, we've got to guard ourselves against this. So I'm bringing it up today. We've got to guard ourselves against seeking all these things that the world has to offer. We need to make sure that we focus our attention, our effort, our energy in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what does righteousness mean? It means to be in right standing with him. This is what's so cool. Um, this is an act of faith. By the way, we are talking, this is Faith Talks with Pastor Mark. We're talking about faith. Here's why I'm going to close this up today. and We'll get off here in about five minutes. The faith that we're using here is very simply by doing this. It requires us to use our faith to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness 
Uh, it requires us to use faith because we can't see his kingdom and his righteousness with our natural eyes. We've got to see it in our spirit and in our heart. We've got to say, God, I'm going to believe that you are who the word declares that you are. I'm going to believe that you're going to do what you said you're going to do in your word, God. I'm going to receive that into my spirit, man, and I'm going to act accordingly. I'm actually going to act like I believe that your timing is perfect. I'm going to act uh, according to what I believe, and I'm going to believe that, Father, that you're going to promote me. You said to humble myself, and, 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 and Father, just that in, in due time, Lord, if I'm humble and, and I'm seeking you first in your kingdom, in due time, you're going to promote me to the position you want me in. You're going to, you're going to provide the right job at the right time. You're going to provide, you know, whatever it is on the outward adornment that I need at the right time. But my thoughts and my purpose and my process and my motivation, my daily method of operation is going to be to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And if I do that, because you said so in Matthew 6, 33, you said you would add all this stuff to me. So my responsibility is to seek you first your kingdom, and your righteousness. This righteousness means right standing with God. Does that mean that you act like a good boy or a good girl? We want to act and do the best we can to obey God and his word, but that's not how we're found righteous by how good we can be or how perfect we can be or how many times we can go to church or how many times we read our Bible. No, no. Our righteousness is found through faith in the blood and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we've got to use our faith. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. This righteousness is found through believing in Jesus Christ. When we believe in Jesus Christ, making him the Lord of our life, and we act like we've done that, and we keep remembering that on a daily basis, and we, and we keep surrendering to him on a daily basis and say, not my will be done, but your will be done. Through, what happens is whenever we go through our day, whether we miss it or we don't miss it, we're found in right standing with God because he sees us, God the Father sees us, through the lens, if, if you can, through, through this lens or this um, uh, visual, I, I'll call it like, it's, it's, to me it's almost like a, um, uh, a sheet of, uh, like a glass in front of us. When God looks at us, he sees us through this glass, and that glass is the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees us through the lens that focuses right through the blood of Christ, and he sees us right with him, not because of how good or bad we are, but because how good Jesus Christ is. And that he paid the price for us to be made the righteousness of God in Christ through the blood of Christ. So God looks at us through that lens of the blood of Christ. And he sees us made righteous. Do you believe it? Maybe we ought to act like we believe it. We need to quit striving to attain what the earth and the world has to offer. What we need to be striving to attain is a deeper relationship with our Heavenly Father. Oh, it's so good when we do that. It's so rewarding when this happens in our lives. So I want to—I just want to encourage you today, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That way you will not be found. Uh, look, what I've seen, I used not to understand this. What I've seen is that um, I am not anymore. I used to be impressed when I saw somebody with power or with money or prestige or a title or a position, man, I was impressed with that. I wanted that, you know, I wanted to be like that. Oh man, I want to be like that. And now I see people in those positions and I pray for them. I say, my God, that's got to be a lot of pressure, handling all that stuff like that. And my desire now has turned from being somebody to, uh, to being a son of God and to not be so concerned with what people think of me and to not be so concerned with who I become or what I'm trying to be. And I've quit trying to be somebody. I've decided just to be who I am, a, a child of the Most High God. I've quit striving after success and power and money and uh, a, a position and a title. Uh, you know, I work hard. And the reason I work hard is to provide for my family. It's not so that I can be somebody because I can tell you this right now. I've found my place in Christ. I am somebody in Christ, and you are too. I've just simply got the revelation of it. I don't know if you have the revelation or not, but it's time to quit striving so hard to be something or to be somebody. And, and, and I can tell you this, what, what good is it for a man or a woman to, to, to gain the whole world yet lose their soul? We've got to be sure that we're focused. Uh, I heard it said like this a long time ago. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Keep your relationship with God on the very top of the, uh, of the, uh, you know, the, 
the position in your life, the very top of the mountain, where that's your first focus. He promises in Matthew 6, that he's going to add everything to you if you'll just focus your energy and your effort and your life on him. He'll make sure that you'll have everything you need. It's in the Word of God. So I want to pray for you, and I, I've enjoyed being with you guys today. I love you all so much, and I'm glad you were able to join us today. I hope you all have the greatest week ever this week. Don't forget tomorrow night at 7 o'clock is Pastor Sarah with Wednesday's Word. Um, our women at church on Thursday night at 7 o'clock have um, a mother-daughter tea. I'm sorry, 6.30, my bad, 6.30 on uh, Thursday night. If you need to know more about that, we'd love for you guys to come. Bring your daughters with you, ladies, and uh, it's going to be a great time for y'all. Um, and then Friday night's uh, worship with the Word at the church. Love to see you guys Friday night at 7 o'clock. And then uh, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, we have our men's breakfast. Uh, it's going to be very powerful. going to be a great time together as a group of men. Uh, men, come on. Invite men to come. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, free breakfast for everybody on, sun on Saturday morning. And uh, then Sunday morning, 10 o'clock church, and have a great message already started up for you guys this week. It's going to be an awesome week. The church uh, is uh, all is well. God is doing great things in our midst. We're seeing people saved, healed, and delivered. We're seeing God do great stuff. So we want you to be part of it in every way that you possibly can. We love you guys. We are praying for you on a continual basis. Every day we're praying for you. You know, keep pressing forward. Keep seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He's going to be adding everything to you. Trust him no matter what's going on. Keep trusting him. Oh, yeah, thank you, Pastor Donna. Tonight, at, I'm sorry, tonight at 6.30, young adults um, at Atomic Church, 6.30 night, uh, young adults, ages 18 to 30. We'd love to see you guys there again. Invite young adults to that meeting. That's They're doing great. It's going to be a great meeting tonight. I love you guys. Let me pray you out. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you're who you say you are and that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. Based upon that, as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, we thank you in advance that you are adding everything that we need to us right on time, exactly in the right proportion of it. It's going to be it's going to be measured out to us exactly right, right on time. So we just take a deep breath right now, God, and we trust you with that, that you're going to do it. Lord, we're not afraid. We're not wringing our hands. We're not worried. We're not in doubt, but we're trusting you today. You said in your word in, in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge you and that you will direct our path and that your provision, Lord, is going to be there for us. Wherever you guide, you provide. So we trust you, God. We love you, Father. We thank you for blessing us, God, with your mercy and your goodness and your grace and your love today, God. Lord, we get, joy, we get our joy from you and we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, I thank you that you give us, Lord, everything, Father, Lord, that, that you have for us today, God. We thank you that the, the, the portion is perfect today for everybody that's watching and listening today, God. Lord, we, we lay all of our weight aside and we cast all of our cares on you and we give you this day. Have your way in our lives, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, I love y'all. Y'all have a great week this week and look forward to seeing you real soon. Blessings.